Hello and welcome to Finance Talk. Welcome to Finance Talk. Today is February the 3rd and you are here with me. Thank you for being here, first of all. This is brought to you and hosted by bestcreditresources.com. My name is Ali Taraftar and I will be guiding you and mentoring you throughout this presentation. So Finance Talk has been on our fourth week this today. Uh, it's been already a month. Um, you know, it's interesting because we've discovered a interest in a lot of people that we deal with um, that are interested in learning more about the financial matters, debt, credit, and of course, uh, real estate, real estate transactions. Now, that's something interesting that we also advise people on. So let's begin by conversating about what's going to be discussed in Finance Tech and what you need to be doing to prepare yourself uh, to participate in this uh, group community. So let's start with why it's important to ask questions, why it's important to ask questions. Now, of course, our goal at Finance Talk is to answer your questions so that it benefits the community where everyone can take away a key strategy or a solution. And with that being said, it's essentially saying that, look, when you ask us a question, everybody that's around you uh, will benefit and they will get the information. So if you ask good questions, the topics will be covered uh, are more and more interesting. And that means more and more people benefit and essentially that goes back to helping the community. Now, if you're on YouTube, right, if you're on YouTube, what you want to do is you want to leave a comment below the video and I'll look at them because I seriously consider the questions that you ask so that I can frame my presentations around giving you true value. And don't forget to subscribe so that, you know, my channel, when you subscribe every Saturday morning, you'll get a notification or so and so as I'm posting up more videos and more content uh, so that you can stay in touch directly. Okay, so here's my story. I'm going to give you a backstory about how I got started. Now, I was only 20 years old when I started in business, when I started my journey in entrepreneurship. Uh, so I got into the business of subprime lending at the time in 2007, starting in Manhattan. Well, we used to buy and sell mortgages with different companies and investment banks. And of course, I uh, was really, really interested because the market looked very, very good at the time. And this is right, right before the recession, right? So my business was booming. And when the 2008 happened, which happened with a worldwide economic crash, everything went down the drain. Everything went down the drain. It was really disastrous. Uh, so within three months, I had to learn the ropes of helping customers basically transform their financial conditions because they can't afford their homes anymore, right? The rates were increasing, uh, the payments were going up. It was a very painful situation. So I had to figure out how to f help a lot of families solve the issues that were happening, and of course, helping them keep uh, stay in their homes. Uh, so this is where I learned the business of credit, right? This is where I learned the business of credit. And I was privileged and given the opportunity to join a premium mastermind group, which is in banking. Uh, that taught me everything I needed to know about credit, debt, investment banking, and real estate. Now, it's a very expensive group, uh, but at the end of the day, the lessons I've learned and the information I've received and the value I was able to provide to my customers was well worth it at the end, right? Um, so let's talk about one of my clients. Let's talk about one of my clients. This is a distressed elderly client of mine. She was uh, very good. I, I communicated with her. I still have a uh, regular communication with her. Uh, but this is what her story looks like. So she had about 15 calls a day, right? So we went from 15 calls a day to debt silence. Now, let's talk a little bit about her story and how it happened. Now, this was a climb on it. She had four collection accounts, and they were almost around 47500 you know, plus or minus their fees. Uh, that was what she owed, and most of these were because of the high interest credit card that she had, right? It was accumulating over time and she couldn't pay them and it was catching on to her. And then, of course, eventually sold to collection account, uh, which basically collection uh, agencies and companies picked it up uh, so they can go after her. They also threatened to sue her, right? They said, we're going to take you to court, garnish your wages and also blacklist her from some banking, which is total garbage, by the way. OK, all the tactics that they tried were illegal. And there were a clear violation of several collection laws, right? So the beautiful thing is, after looking through her situation and doing a financial plan for her, uh, we transformed her uh, 47500 to zero in a matter of 60 days. We basically eliminated all that collection item, uh, including the debt she owed, and got legal validation to do so, uh, which was very, very helpful to her at the end of the day. So that's that's one of the stories that I wanted to, to share with you to, to show you exactly what kind of business I was in. Now, I had another agent that I used to work with. He was in real estate, uh, but at the, at the same time, he was young, right? He was young. He had some money, 
but he wasn't sure of what he wanted to do. He was uncertain. So what we did was we put together, we put together a package. Uh, so we started with 15,000 for a group coaching, uh, and then we went and got him a $5 million deal out of that. And how it works is he approached me to mentor him in 2008 because he had no clue about what to do. Of course, the recession didn't really help at that time. Uh, he was really weak. He, he, he didn't have a strength, uh, a leg to stand on because end result is when you're young, uh, and, and you have to deal with uh, senior bankers. I mean, you're on your own. You don't have a chance in the marketplace. So you really need to figure out uh, what to do and how to do it. So he approached me. I was already in the business, well vested in, and I mentored him. Okay. And at the time, all he knew was he wanted to be successful in real estate and he wanted to invest like the pros. That's all he knew. Of course, he knew there was a huge opportunity because 2008, everybody's exiting the real estate market. Uh, empty homes, you know, being left because uh, pay payments were due and they couldn't afford it. But he knew that that was a pristine and a good time to invest. Uh, so he wanted to take advantage of that opportunity so that he uh, can can go into real estate and invest like the pros. Now, the first thing we obviously did was we looked through his financial plan and we transformed him. We cleaned up his credit and we gave him some solid financial foundation to work with so that whenever it goes to financial institutions, even past that recession, even at the time of, uh, of uh, the subprime lending crash and the market crash, he can still be able to go ahead and borrow. Uh, so we needed to structure that. That was the first thing we did. The second thing we did is we gave him the right tools, right? So, of course, on a personal level, you can only borrow so much. Uh, but I told him, look, let's do a credit business program where uh, you will be able to establish 50000 in credit in about six months. So he, he you know, worked with me on that. I guided him through it. I mentored him, handheld him through the process. And then he had established the $50,000 in credit in addition to having good personal credit. And then last but not least, third thing we did for him is we prepared him for financial success. So I guided him step by step on what to do what financial system to use and how to get in front of investors who are looking for reliable partners to work with, right? So one thing to remember is at the time when very few investors had confidence in the market, uh, we were able to close deals. I personally, of course, uh, helping my mentee here uh, who wanted my mentoring and we were able to close still a $5 million deal. So this is exciting because a lot of people don't realize that even during the hardest times, right? If you do things right, if you establish financial confidence, if you position yourself the correct way, there are so much more things that you can do and you don't have to hesitate, okay? And of course, the last story I want to share with you is how we saved a home by removing a bankruptcy. How we saved a home by removing a bankruptcy. So we saved a $540,000 home, okay? And the way it worked was, is very simple. Uh, the client had very severe bankruptcy on their file. Uh, the wife did not have good credit. Uh, they needed to sign a new mortgage and the term was coming up. Basically, they, she already had signed for the mortgage and then it was expiring. And then, you know, they were basically in a very dire strait because the family was distressed, right? They had three kids, two dogs and a cat. It was a pretty big home. And they needed to stay there because the kids were already settled into the neighborhood, right? They already uh, made a few good friends and everything was going well for them. So when that happened, uh, the wife just got a job. She didn't have solid employment record because she had to take off, you know, take care of the kids. Uh, she, she was devoted to studying a little bit and then uh, she couldn't go and co-sign because she didn't have the income to show, right? Uh, so my client was an aerospace engineer. He was earning 133000 a year. He was qualified. The only issue, though, was his previous bankruptcy was the only thing holding him back. So we couldn't really do anything about that uh, at the time. But I was discussing with some of my peers that I was working with as my associates. And we said, you know what, there are strategies right now, uh, particularly in credit at the time when I first got into the business. And I said, look, maybe we can do something about that and see if we can handle that file. So ultimately, we were able to remove his bankruptcy in a matter of 63 days. We gave him the ability to sign for a new mortgage with great terms, by the way, because the only thing that was holding his credit back was that bankruptcy. He had decent credit, right? He had decent credit. He had some good trade lines in there. Uh, he had opened some brand new accounts in you know, previous years, secured, of course, because he had high income, so he was able to get those lines, uh, but he was able to do so successfully, okay? So we saved his home, okay? We saved his home. His family's good, and they were happy. 
Now, this is what I do regularly. This is my business. This is the business I'm in. It's not just about credit, right? It's about financial planning. It's about strategy. It's about making things right. And one of the things that I love is is that I've I've been able to to help over 2,000 customers, you know, in the past few years. And this is exciting because a lot of people out there who are struggling in financial matters don't necessarily know where to go, right? Don't necessarily know where to go. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I started Finance Talk. Now, I'm also a highly sought after acclaimed financial strategist, a mentor, as you've seen, and a guide for those who want deep financial transformation. And I'm, I take that very seriously. Okay, when somebody comes to me and they say uh, they want to be mentored by me, now, given the circumstances and the time, sometimes I may not take it because I don't have the time to do that. But at times, when I have the opportunity to work with people, uh, I give them my commitment 100%, 110%. And I know that the client is serious too, so they will give it 110%. Uh, first thing we do, get the money out of the way and focus on what's important. And we build their deep financial core and we go through a pristine financial transformation. They were really happy. Okay, some of the clients that I have are really, really, really happy with what they have. Uh, some are basically, you know, in difficult times, of course, and then we're still guiding them through the process. Uh, but they're able to transform themselves financially, which is a very big benefit of what I do. And, of course, I authored the book called The United Credit of America, which is by far the most comprehensive personal financial planning and credit rebuilding book. It's available on Amazon. You can download it. It's less than $4, and it's really like a, a steal, basically, because you have a lot of information in there that you can learn. Uh, and, of course, you can get to know my strategy and the principles that I use to help my clients. And, of course, I help individuals get clarity and give them solutions to their financial concerns. And, of course, they have to be willing to work with me and cooperate and be honest. Right? I cannot help customers who are not honest with me. Uh, and, of course, they leave stuff in the lingo and, and you know, it, it hurts me more than it hurts them because at the end of the day, I'm committed to help them. But when I see that I can't help someone because of their unwillingness to cooperate or them being dishonest, it hurts me because it, I feel that that person could have had a better future. That person could have benefited. OK, so let's be connected. Right. I want you to subscribe. Right. I want you to subscribe. And the reason why it's because every Saturday weekly roundup questions and answers will be covering so many different interesting topics and you want to stay in tune. I'll also be adding a new video series regularly. There will be between about three to five minutes each discussing different topics in finance, debt, uh, banking and things like real estate. And this is important because you will get the first in class financial education and information that we will be covering. And of course, one of the easiest ways to get to know me is through these videos, right? You are listening here. You're now present, uh, presented in front uh, watching this finance talk. And I'm pretty sure that that means that you had some sort of uh, convincing of yourself to go through to say, look, I want to be learning something new. I want to apply myself into something different. So that's why you're here with me today. So. Let me ask you a few questions. Now, we talked about finance talk. We talked about some of my client stories. Let me ask you a few important questions. Now, where are you financially right now? Okay, where are you financially right now? How is your credit? If you were to look at your credit, how does it look? How much debt are you in presently? Okay, how much debt are you in presently? Do you have a family that depends on you at this time? Are you... Single? Are you married? Do you have kids? Tell me a little bit. Are you considering perhaps buying a home in the next few months? Are you looking to purchase a home? It's because your family's expanding. You want to settle down. Do you have thoughts about buying a home probably in the next three to four months, maybe six or even 12 months? What about starting a business? Have you ever thought about that? Have you thought about the entrepreneurial journey? What will it take? How exciting it will be? Have you ever thought about starting a business? Also, have you thought about what would happen if you lost your job? God forbid. Okay. Are you protected? Do you have everything in place so that your fam fam family is going to be okay financially? And can you walk into banks and obtain loans or lines of credit easily? Do you have that kind of financial confidence? Do you have the ability to do that because your credit is stellar? And of course, this is a very interesting question is if you were to become a bank underwriter today and you were to look at your own credit, right? What's the first thing that will go through your mind? Right. What's the first thing that will go through your mind? Now, these are questions that I ask all of my clients when I deal with, especially on a consulting level, because I want to hear them. I want to hear their story. I want to know, who, you know, what they are and, and, and what they're what they're looking for. 
uh, in, in their financial plan, what they want to achieve, of course, in the short and long term. This is very important for me because if I don't know their goals and objectives, it'll be harder for me to help them. Okay. And this is a very big reason why you need to attend Finance Talk, why you need to subscribe to this channel, listen in every Saturday, get some information and walk away from it. Okay. You get great strategies that you can execute right now after you use, after you learn and, and get an access to this. You also learn top financial tactics that are working today. You need this because you don't want to be outdated. You want information on a weekly basis that you can depend on. Also, you gain immediate financial confidence. You don't have to wait until, you know, reading a book or whatever. Although I encourage you to read books, I will recommend some books as I'm going through, uh, through uh, some of the videos that I'll be creating for you throughout this channel because you want information from me. Uh, also, you feel good about making good choices. This is financial choices are, are, you can make them more confidently when you learn, when you, when you apply this knowledge and you actually execute, right? You can learn all, all you want, but if you don't apply it, nothing comes out of it. Also, you can be more prepared when it comes to making tough financial choices and you can do it with confidence. You need that because in today's standard, almost every day you're going to have to make a tough financial choice. Okay. So it's like me being your own personal mentor and guiding you through these videos. Of course, you can play them anytime, but the best part is you can have access to all this content anytime you want, as long as you're subscribed to my channel. And of course, I talk about a whole lot more stuff, some strategies, tips, and like I said, the three to five minute videos that I'm going to be creating as a series. You'll see my face. I'll talk. Uh, I'm going to give you some information. I'll mentor you and guide you through a lot of different financial strategies and plans that you can benefit from. And I want to be there for you. So let's talk about today's topic. Today's topic. Okay. Decoding the banking system for consumers. Now, a lot of people will probably be wondering, well, what is this topic about? What are we going to be discussing? And this is very important because in this topic, right, we're going to go through some pretty interesting things that probably you haven't heard of before. So here are some of the insider secrets that we're going to be revealing today. Okay, here are some of the insider secrets that we will be revealing today. Let's talk first about the truth about credit reporting agencies and how information is reported. Some of the stuff you may already know and some maybe not. We also talk about why you should look beyond credit repair and why you need to understand the financial system more than anything else, especially today more than ever. Okay, this is very, very important. Also, some of the things that most credit repair companies aren't telling you, some things that you need to know and you need to have your mind wrapped around this information because after you walk away from this presentation today, I can promise you, you will be more enlightened and not only that, you will have all the information that you need based on those three categories to understand deeply on what you're getting yourself into when it comes to financial choices. So let's start talking about credit reporting agencies. Let's go behind the scenes and uncover some of the information that you need to know and be aware of uh, when it comes to doing credit repair. Now, they are a private organization. You knew this, right? But they are solely focused on profit. That's all they care about. So when they sign up a new furniture, uh, when somebody's putting in uh, information in your credit reports, uh, people reporting to them, it, it's income for them, right? It's, it's like everybody using their metro system and, and their metro two systems and, and like electronic reporting. That's all income for them. Every time somebody posts some item, it's a couple of dollars in their pocket, right? So it's all about profit. And their biggest objective is to satisfy the board of advisors and investors. That's all they care about. Consumers are just a byproduct of their success, okay? They don't really care. Now, because of that, right, th we know that there's a lot of litigation that happens with them. They go through all that. But being dragged into court for them is considered normal. I can promise you that. Okay, they make several billion dollars a year. So when, they be, when they're getting dragged into court, uh, for them it's completely normal and it's considered a cost of doing business. And they have all the money to support their actions and everything they need to do to protect themselves. And out of every 10 items that are furnished in the credit reports, especially people who are reporting it to your credit bureaus, 10 of them are completely unverifiable. Okay, they are completely unverifiable. And the reason I say that is because electronic transmissions are sent between furnisher and the credit bureaus on a regular basis. It's called an automated validation process, right? So they basically cross-reference several databases and information to consider it valid. They don't go through any documentation. They don't care about that. Because at the end of the day, it's it's less costly for them, and of course, uh, for them, it's all about margins. It's about profit. It's about you know furnishing electronically to make the money quickly, 
uh, so that they can go on with their lives and do what they got to do. Now, here's the reason why you need to look beyond credit repair. Here's the reason why you need to look beyond credit repair. Okay. Now, the law requires people who are furnishing information through electronic records uh, to archive information for 10 years. Basically meaning like if you use uh, an application and if you go to a bank and you have a credit card and it's the year one of your credit card and all of a sudden you default and then you decide to do credit repair, okay, you can clean up your credit report from that financial institution, you know, for something that you feel, okay, I want to get rid of this item. But the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, FDIC, which is the Banking Deposit and Insurance Commission, the Securities Exchange Commission, which is regulating investments, as including the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, among many other agencies, require for institutions who are putting information electronically, for applications, for credit, for reasons of identity, to keep information on record for 10 years. Now, this is on their side. The people who are actually filling up your applications and giving you approvals, the actual creditors and lenders themselves. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that if you were to go and clean up your credit, that repository database, the archives, that can be accessed anytime. So if you go back to that bank, let's say at one point you forgot all you did disputing on that, and then eight years down the road you decide, I want to apply with this bank again. What's going to happen? Do you think you're going to get approved? Most probably not. And if they do, they're going to ask you for secured approval. They're going to ask you for a deposit with cash collateral. So it can happen that sometimes they don't really care and then they just give you a card because they have plenty of liquidity to go around and credit extensions across their board uh, for initiatives of putting out money so that they can profit. It can happen. But it only happens if they see financial confidence in your file that you've had credit history with other financial institutions for at least twice the amount of time uh, of whatever previous record you had with them, okay? Uh, so this means that you cannot you just simply clean up your credit. It, it won't work anymore. You can get denied, like I said, electronic databases are shared between financial institutions and insurance companies, and you have to be very careful, okay? Now, some people go through like seven to eight different credit repair processes during a 10-year period. This is crazy, okay? This is nuts. Why would anybody do that? Like if you're looking at seven to eight, eight, eight credit repair scenarios, and you think, oh, this is it. I'm going to clean up and just get myself other credit and I just walk like that. It's a very dangerous place to be in. It's a very dangerous place to be in because you're basically exhausting your resources. You're exhausting your ability to borrow and go out there and create financial uh, situations for yourself where you can borrow and leverage and get more uh, as you need to. So you don't want to be stuck with that. It's a very dangerous place to be in. Okay. And of course, eventually, okay, what's going to happen is. Some people that go and do this and then they start applying for new credit and across the board and these electronic databases are referenced, not your credit reports, electronic databases. Uh, what happens is you're placed on a nationwide fraud alert, okay, that are meant for only financial institutions and insurance companies like I was, I was explaining. And this is a very bad place to be because to clean that up, okay, it can take 10 years, 11, 15 years. I know some clients, they can't even clean it up now, no matter how much assets they have. So it's very, very important to be careful not to mess around with credit reports, not to mess around with electronic databases, not to mess around with financial institutions. If you can't afford it, don't get it. It's as simple as that, okay? And this is a different fraud alert. It's not your credit report fraud alert. It's a nationwide database, okay? So you have to be very, very careful. Be very, very careful. So what the credit repair companies are, are hiding from you is what we're going to be talking at this point, okay? So some of the things that you need to know is that you know, just simple credit cleaning is not enough. Your report cleaning is not enough. We discussed this in the previous slide. We talked about that and why it's not enough. So here's the thing. You need a financial strategy and a personal financial plan. You can't just depend on credit. You can't just say, I want to clean it up and get new credit. You need to have a financial plan. If you borrow, you need to pay. How are you going to pay? You need to make more income. You need to increase your cash flow. How are you going to get your cash flow? You have to strategize your financial degree. You have to be more intelligent in making financial choices, right? How do you become more intelligent in financial choices? You learn. You apply principles. You reduce your debts. You reduce your expenses. You increase your income. Uh, you know, you attend sessions like this one. So there are so many different things you need to do, but you need to have a plan. You need to have a strategy, okay? And don't forget that the credit repair companies out there are depending on you to come back so that they can keep earning money. Of course, that's how it is, okay? That is their business. In fact, they depend on you to stay less educated and less informed. For them, this is important. The less you know, the better for them. 
Okay, the less you know, the better for them. And of course, they want you to have bad financial choice because this is the business they're in. They're in the business of cleaning credit, right? So the, the more damage you do, the better for them. Okay, that's how they look at it. I don't want you to ever think that the credit repair companies out there are your friend. They're not. You need a holistic financial solution and strategy company like Best Credit Resources that's looking out for your best interest. And it starts with cleaning up your credit, but then it also looks at stabilizing your financial condition, building more credit, building more financial relationships, and so on and so forth. Okay, you need companies that are out there to look in your best interest, not people who depend on you to have bad credit so you can come and pay their bills for them. Okay? So they don't even care about your family, your long-term financial plans. All they care about, oh, you have bad credit? Come and give me that check or send me some money. That's all they care about. You know, you can't deal with people like that. You have to clean your mindset right now and think, okay, well, this person is going to do credit repair. I know him from a friend of a friend. It doesn't matter who, what you know or which friend of a friend he is or she is. What matters now is look at your financial condition. Okay, nobody's going to pay your bills for you. They don't care. If you're in the streets and they're okay, they're going to just give you a pity talk or you know, probably share a status on Instagram or whatever it is, but that's the max they're going to do. They're not going to pay your bills for you. Who's going to pay that? You got to pay your bills for you. So who's going to help you through the process of a financial strategy? Somebody who cares enough about you and your family, like myself, right, who I've been helping many, many different families in many different situations, okay? You have to work with a firm that really cares and understands your situation and is willing to work with you to execute a financial plan and take their time doing it because it's not about just having bad credit and coming and paying the bills for them. So I want you to understand that and take that information away. So what we're going to do is we're going to answer some questions based on some of the questions I had previously. Some of my clients asking me some questions. So we're going to answer some questions, frequently asked questions, okay? Now, let's start with question one. Let's start with question one. Question one is, hey, Ali, I'm in Lexington Law, and I have been with them for about four months. So, so far, they have removed about three, to three out of the 12 items that are reporting on my credit bureau. Can you still help me even though I'm still with them? Now, this is a very quick question. Okay, a lot, a lot of my clients come to me and they ask me, hey, Ali, look, I, uh, I'm already working with another firm or this person, but I'm not seeing the outcome. Do you, do you mind if I switch over? Now, one of the things you have to realize is the timelines, right? Like if they're working on your file and you have a commitment or maybe you don't, and all of a sudden they stop working. Uh, within the next 30 to 60 days, responses can be coming back and forth. Maybe there are certain things that are being investigated, and then you need to have uh, an understanding of where those, uh, where that logistic is, what's happening with your letters, what's happening with the credit bureaus, how they're corresponding. Uh, so you need to wait it out until that's complete before you make a choice of, of onboarding with me. Okay, so typically in that scenario, to a client, I would say no, not at this time. Wait until you get some sort of outcome. Wait another month or maybe stop. Tell them, write them a letter and disclose to them, look, I'm done and I want to continue and let them give you a confirmation and then 30 to 60 days from that confirmation, then I can say, let's have a look at your credit report. Let's see what needs to be done and what stage we're at and then we can take it from there, okay? So this is something that you need to know when it comes to credit report. It doesn't have to be just with me. It could be with any other company that you're going. Don't shuffle between companies. Just keep this principle in mind. So let's go over to our next question. Question number two, question number two. I've been reading your blog and came across your video on where you talk about how different you are from other firms in terms of credit repair. What do you do differently than others out there and, you know, and uh, there who are offering the same thing? So basically, th this question relates to me being different. Why they're asking is, well, well how are you different from others like Lexington and or other credit repair companies? One other thing you need to understand is we're not a credit repair company, right? This is a misunderstanding. So a lot of people have the conception that, okay, well, Best Credit Resources is just another credit repair company. We're not just another credit repair company. Credit repair is 5% of the job we do. 5% of our business is credit repair, and we do with a fantastic job, okay? When it comes to, you know, being in competition, nobody can come near us when it comes to the financial strategies that go with credit repair that we do. So the difference with us is that credit repair is only the first step, we have a six stage process when it comes to building credit. The first is the repair process. We do that. The second is building uh, and working relationships with the existing accounts that you have, handling that. Uh, the third is basically looking and, and leveraging the current scenarios and increasing your credit. And then of course, from that we build new accounts and then we create a six month financial strategy to go deep into your financial process, concerns, things that you need to tackle 
and then of course ultimately a 12 month plan and then from that we can go into a mentorship program we'll help you with business credit real estate your financial goals so if you're looking at a simple credit repair company this it's this question is basically comparing me to simple people out there that are just doing credit repair cleaning and depending on you to come back to have bad credit that's the wrong question right the answer is we're not like any other credit repair company because we are not a credit repair company we are a financial strategy and mentoring company that's what we are we help you we do the work with you we guide you through the process some of the stuff is done for you like the credit repair service uh, but we also do a lot more than that we help you get into your home we help you get loans we help you add new accounts we help you negotiate with your creditors uh, we help you build a real estate portfolio, go through investment strategies, similar, and so on and so forth. So we are very, very different, okay? So I hope that answers the question. Question number three. Question number three. I've been in business for four years. I don't know what my company's credit is like. What services do you offer in terms of helping me get funding? That's a very good question. Now, the answer to that is simple. Depending on what your goals are, what do you want to do with your business? How much do you need? Why do you need the money, right? Uh, are you personally guaranteeing this this loan that you want to get or do you want to do it on the merits of just your company? So the first thing is obviously pulling out your credit repair from DNB Experian Business and of course Equifax Business. Get a report on that uh, to see if you have any type of business already or uh, credit established already. And then the offer of the services that we do for you in that situation is depends, right? It really depends on what you want. So if you're saying, like, I don't have business credit, uh, then maybe we establish that we go through our business credit program, right? If you're saying, well, I want to personally guarantee, then we can go into the funding scenario with promotional rates and stuff like that, that you get high balances uh, and, and, sorry, high credit limits to borrow based on your, your personal score. And if you need to clean that because you have certain things that are derogatory, and that's holding you back, then we have to clean that. So it really depends. Like the question here is is really meant to say, look, Ellie, can you look at the situation of my business and my personal to see how I can qualify for funding to help my business do A, B, and C? And then we highlight what those are. And then we come to realization on a plan to be able to tackle all those objectives. Okay? So that's how I'm going to be answering that question. Let's move on to the next question. Question number four. Question number four. So I saw that you have a book out on Amazon and it states on how to fix credit. What's the difference between you, your book and you doing the credit repair for me, right? So very good question, right? Like I, I promote my book a lot. I talk about it and I say to my clients, look, grab a copy and all that. So it's not really much different. Here's the thing. When you get my book, it's more concentrated around financial planning and strategy more than anything. Credit repair is a byproduct of the book. You get good credit by just looking through the book, understanding the financial principles, being organized, being dedicated, having a mindful of, of a wealth mindset and just going out there and doing what you got to do. Okay. The difference is it's not the credit repair that I do with my company, right? The, the, the business we're in, we're in financial education, mentoring and coaching. So when you come to me and we, we help you fix your credit, we also create financial plans, tools, we give you resources. We guide you step by step on what you need to do and how do you need to do it. It's, it's like a, um, a doctor, right? Like you can go to a doctor and then you pay for consulting and you get the results that you want and he gives you recommendations. He guides you through it and he walks you through it because that's the expertise uh, that you go to. You won't go to, let's say, a person who's cooking cake to tell you about what uh, potential headaches you have or how to fix that, right? You have to go to a specialist who qualifies for that. So the book is essentially a guide for you. It's, it's a place where you start, you understand, you have the mindset, you can do your credit repair yourself, you have to have the patience. Actually, the book has some tools and resources you can download once you have access to it. There are some links that I share in there, uh, the resources section to, to go ahead and download some of the content that is associated with the book to get the help you uh, to get the job done. But on a different scope, you know, the business I'm in is more of a financial mentorship and pr uh, coaching program to give you the education you need. And we guide you, handheld you, through the process, through our expertise and, and certified services, uh, take you to the next level. So the difference really is the scale of service you get, uh, the quality, our time, uh, the hand-holding process, and of course, uh, making sure that you're 100% successful instead of doing it yourself. But you absolutely need still the book because the book not just talks about credit repair, it talks about financial strategy, understanding it, uh, and, and going through some different scenarios and having the resources downloaded, some checklists, some guides, things that will help you personally on a financial plan. So you need that as well. Okay. So uh, one of the things about today is I have a four 
day mini course and it's for free okay i have a four day mini course it's for absolutely free so the first day we talk about the three ingredients for successful credit repair okay you'll see me i'll give a presentation and you'll take away it's uh about you know uh, seven to ten minutes per video it's really short it's sweet uh, there's great content great information you can take away and day two we talk about how to set up a financial foundation that attracts capital now that's a very important place to be because you always want to be attracting capital okay on the third day we talk about how you can instantly increase your net worth by five to ten times instantly increase your net worth by five to ten times there's something that you want to take away you want to be in this course and you want to have access to this information okay and then of course last but not least on day four we talk about how to fail proof a financial plan with a checklist that you can download at the end uh, so this is something that I've been offering a lot of my people on a paid scenario uh, there's a lot more content that we offer but if you join this course for a limited time it's for free it's a four-day mini course I send it through email so you have access to those videos and you can go through them and you can learn you can walk away some with some great content this is something you absolutely don't want to miss so if you want to have access to this course head over to bestcreditresources.com bestcreditresources.com forward slash free course again that's best credit creditresources.com forward slash free course so once again if you have any questions comments or feedback for today's session or if you have any questions that you want to ask for the next one for me to answer like i did today please don't forget to write to talk at bestcreditresources.com again that's talk at bestcreditresources.com i thank you first of all so much for being here for listening to this presentation uh, of course today you learned that it was a little bit different because we went through some pretty uh, epic content we decoded the banking system i told you how important it was uh, to go beyond the credit repair stage where financial strategy and planning really really matters uh, to, to build wealth to be well off financially to be secure and protected to take care of your family to get a good job to to secure your financial well-being okay uh, so i hope you enjoyed and i will see you on the next episode of finance talk this is ali tarafter your guide and mentor bye for now